Thank you for watching our videos. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. This is a sample video and if you want to get access to the full version, please visit our website www.rasoff.com. Thank you. In this section, I'm going to focus on IP3 calculations, so I will introduce a method that you can use in order to find the intermodulation component power level. And actually, it's a very useful and easy method. I'm going to show it to you. So uh, let's start this. Let's have a review, first of all, on uh, intermodulation and the power levels we had. So uh, we talked about this multiple times. So so if you observe the system in top right, so we said that if you have two interferers and they have uh, some power level, and if you apply this uh, at the input of nonlinear system, at the output we are going to have two tones at the same frequency, omega 1 and omega 2, but two extra tones that we call them intermodulation component, at tones of 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and 2 omega 2 minus omega 1. And these two tones are problematic for us because they may appear at our channel and block our main signal. So then uh, I'm going to define the difference between these two signals and I call it delta A and we are going to use this later. What happens if I increase the power of these two interferers further? So I'm going to increase it until I reach a specific value, a specific power level and if I observe the output, I'm going to see that signals have same power. It means that the first order component and the third order component, they have same power. They have reached the same level. And I call this power AIP3, IIP3, or PIIP3 at the input. So we talked about this multiple times. At this point, if we apply this power to our system, the first and third order components, they're going to have same power and we call this power level OIIP3, the output IIP3. So these are the definitions we have. So now we want to see how we can do some calculations here. For example, let's say, imagine that we have this A in, the input signal, and we have the gain and IP3 of the system. We want to find the intermodulation component at the output. So if we go to the left side, this is a very good guide, a graphical representation, we can actually find a very good expression and formula for this. So I'm going to a little bit explain this. Remember that at the first place we had A in as our amplitude. So this A in is here. So if you check, A in gives me the power of A O main, which is here, and also the intermodulated component at this level, which is basically this one, the power. So if I call this P1 and if, I'll, if I call this P2, these two power levels, so this is going to be basically this level is going to be P2 and this level is going to be P1. Yes, up to here is clear. And this is my A in. So what happens if I increase my input power? And by the way, these two are log. They're both defined in log scale. So don't get confused. These are not linear. These are, this is log scale, both of the axes. So if I increase my power, I'm going to reach this one, which is now the second one. And at this point, I'm going to have the same power levels. And this is called OIIP3. Let's say call this P3. And this is actually here. This level is P3. So P1, P2, P3. So this actually, this figure matches with these two figures. It, it actually explains everything. So now the most important part, we have to do our calculation and come up with expression. So assuming that this red line is a first order line, because this is first order, yeah, because it's a gain. This is gain times A in. So uh, if, uh, if you remember, we talked about this multiple times. This is actually alpha one A in. But this one, is 3 over 4 alpha 3 a in to the power of 3. So this actually a first order and this one is a third order. 